it is time to buckle up because this is probably going to be one of the most in-depth trainings you've watched on how to start a social media marketing agency in 2023 there's a lot of things that have changed and from someone who's been in the space for close to four years at this point this 2023 compared to 2022 is probably the year with most changes changes that you have to absolutely make if you are to have success with social media marketing agency and the reason why i say that is because there's more people that have entered the space in the past year than any other year and this means that it's more crowded than ever which if you're going to do what everyone has been doing for the past one to three years you're probably not going to have much success like 99% of people who try to start a social media marketing agency, but it creates an incredible opportunity, an opportunity to go left when everyone is going right, an opportunity to come to the market with an incredible offer that completely shakes it up and you tap into a blue ocean while most people are stuck in the old way of doing things, tapping into a red, bloody and saturated ocean. And the reason why this is going to be an insanely in-depth training is because we're not only going to be talking about how to sign clients for your agency, I'm, I'm literally going to be handing you over the strategy that books us 40 to 50 million a day for my businesses, but I'm also going to be sharing with you the technical, tangible skill of getting results for your clients so you ooze confidence on your sales goals so that you can actually keep your clients for a very long time and so that you attract very high ticket clients. If that wasn't enough, we're also going to be talking about what is changing in the SMA space, what you need to be aware of, what mistakes to watch out for, and what adjustments you need to make this year to make sure that you have insane success. So without further ado, let's get into what's actually changing. So let's actually start with the changes. And if you're new to the social media market, in the agency space, then great, because you're definitely not going to be making these mistakes. And if you have been in the SME space for a while or even running your agency, you can fix and adjust these things so you have an incredible 2023 ahead. Now, one of the key things that is going to be changing in 2023 is this whole idea of relying on contractors. For the longest time, the way most people have run a social media marketing agency is by delegating the service completely to a contractor. In fact, the whole idea was you come into the space and you pick a service and you just delegate it to a contractor while you focus on signing clients. And that is no longer going to fly for a number of reasons. The first and main one is that this strategy is completely saturated. There's way more people now starting an SMA than actual contractors who have been in the space for a while actually know how to deliver an incredible service for clients. Not only that, but the A player contractors want to work with A players. Here you have a lot of people coming into the space with really nothing to offer. They don't have any experience. They don't have any expertise. And everyone wants the top contractors, but the contractors have hundreds of different offers. Not only that, but if they were to onboard you, they wouldn't have your full attention. And if that wasn't enough, you're literally putting the success of your business in the hands of a completely external third party person for whom you're not even the number one priority. They want to have the confidence of having the tangible and technical skill of being able to deliver results for clients without having to rely on contractors. In fact, most people spend one to two months hiring a contractor when they could have put that time strategically to learning the skill, which I'll talk about in just a second. The next big thing in 2023 for social media marketing agencies is transitioning away from selling a service and instead selling a solution. So most agencies out there, most freelancers out there, they focus on selling a service. For example, they sell Facebook ads. The problem with that is that a service is just a simple commodity. There's hundreds of thousands of people offering the exact same service. So there's actually very little differentiation. Not only that, but it's not a very irresistible offer. You're simply offering a service. And what that leads to is a price competitive market where everyone is competing on price simply because there's no differentiation on the actual offer. This person sells Facebook ads for 1200 a month, but then this person in a third world country can do the exact same thing for 400 bucks. And so you're just purely competing on price and not on value. You cannot command high ticket retainers. And the fourth thing that is changing is the complete shift towards things online towards e-commerce. Now, I'm not saying that local businesses don't work. I see a lot of people arguing, you know, between local business and e-commerce and why e-commerce is not the way to go or local business is not, is not the way to go. And the reality is they both work. Now, if you give me a choice, let's just say you have a finish line, right? And you have a choice between a Fiat and a Ferrari, I'm probably going to pick the Ferrari, right? And so both will get you over the finish line. It's just what is the best vehicle to get you to that finish line? And so if I'm going into that race, I'm definitely picking the Ferrari. And that is what e-commerce is here. Now, if you look at local businesses, there's a lot of limitations when it comes to being a service provider, especially if you're looking to onboard incredible clients, have the biggest impact in their lives and also grow your business and make a lot of money. The reason why that is, is because first of all, local business is geographically limited. You're limited by your geography. And so you cannot sign clients from anywhere in the world and it limits the pool of clients that you can choose from. With e-commerce, I personally love the fact that you can reach out to any brand out there in the world because you actually want to work with them. So it doesn't limit you geographically. And we live in a world where financial freedom is not enough. You want to have time and location 
information freedom and working with local businesses definitely limits that. Not only that, but when you're helping local business, the reality is it's a very hard sell if you're selling them online advertising. Why? Because they have a lot of other traffic sources and they don't have to rely on online advertising. They have street traffic, they have geographical limitations, right? So for example, if you arrive at a city and you have a gym five minutes away from your house, and another one 30 minutes away from your house, it doesn't really matter how much better the other gym is, you're probably gonna pick the one that is closest to you. A lot of it also works by referrals. My point is that online advertising is not a massive necessity. If you look at e-com brands though, these founders understand that they absolutely must have online advertising in place because until they have a predictable stream of customers pretty much on autopilot and they know how much they can spend to acquire a customer, meaning they can put $1 in and get three back, they don't really have a business. If they don't have online advertising, unless they have like an incredibly viral product, which is very, very rare, it's gonna be very hard for them to get eyeballs. They're not on a the street. They don't really get referrals. They don't have geographical limitations. They literally don't exist unless they get eyeballs. If that wasn't enough, your value is always capped. For example, let's take a restaurant or let's take a dentist. They have a maximum number of clients they can have. They have a maximum number of tables they can fill. And if you're getting them way over that, well, you're probably gonna have to stop your services. Unless they literally buy another building and hire a bunch of staff, it's very hard to scale the value that you're adding to them. And that results in your ability to scale your income with that company that you get from that company are also capped. I could go on and on, but as opposed to what you'll see in just a second with e-commerce, with local businesses, you can't really charge them based on the value that you're adding to them. Why? Because we're actually optimizing for leads. We're not optimizing for someone to take out their card and pay for something. You're optimizing for a lead, which is someone that shows interest and maybe shows up at that local business. And that person could be translated into money, but ultimately it is down to the client to transform that lead into cash collected. For example, if I'm running ads for a restaurant, the way you'd get people into the restaurant is by offering them maybe a free dessert or you know, a free drink if you bring someone else. For example, if I'm running ads to a dentist, the way you can get them into the clinic is by offering them a free teeth cleaning, but it's gonna be down to the dentist to then upsell them into something that is paid, maybe a teeth whitening or maybe some retainers, whatever it is. Look, at the end of the day, I've just given you a bunch of reasons why local businesses is just not the best vehicle to get you over that finish line. And someone could argue for the pros of local businesses, and there are pros, don't get me wrong. But what no one can argue against is the fact that everyone is currently or is gonna be selling something online in the next 10 to 15 years, whether it's a service, a product, information, or themselves as a personal brand. And all these people all want one single thing, which is growth. And so if everyone is currently or is gonna be selling something online, and most people simply just don't have the know-how or time to master the skill because most e-com founders are great at building a vision and building a product and building a team around their vision, but they just don't know how to acquire customers predictably and profitably, then the most valuable people in the current economy are those that can grow things online. They are the rainmakers and without them, there's no business. So I'm not saying local businesses don't work, right? Can you make money? Yes. Right? The same way that you can make money with anything if you invest enough time into it. But we're looking at what is the best vehicle uh, right now and also what has the most longevity. I feel like a lot of people going into the online space, they think about the now, right? What can make me money right now? And don't get me wrong, going down the e-commerce route does, but they don't think about the longevity. The reality that no one can argue against is that last year, e-commerce grew more than in the past 10 years. And it's only gonna grow in crescendo. Now in 20 years, are there not gonna be any local businesses? No, there's still gonna be a segment of businesses that are local, but the vast majority of businesses are going online. And not only that, but you have new massive economies entering the online space, like the creator economy, the info product economy, the e-commerce economy getting bigger and better. And so yes, you can make money with local business working with a few local business clients for very low ticket retainers, selling them a service that is just a commodity and you're purely competing against everyone on price or you can actually learn tangible technical skills that people need desperately right now and are gonna need desperately in 10 to 15 years and become one of the most valuable people in the current economy of today. Which brings me to the main and final thing that is changing in SMMA in comparison to these past you know, four to five years. Uh, and this year, which is the need for having tangible and technical skills. I feel like a lot of people coming into this space or if you've heard about this online business are realizing the importance of it. But the reality is when you ask most people that are entering this space or even people that have signed their first client and you ask them, what is your value apart from just delegating to a contractor and, and using a sales tactic to get a client onboarded who's gonna leave you after your minimum retention, most people just won't be able to answer that question. So many people are coming into the space focusing on making a quick buck without focusing on becoming valuable. And by default, they don't make a quick buck, nor do they become valuable. And the reality is most of these people never sign clients. And the ones that do maybe sign one, two, three clients. But what recessions do, like the one that is incoming, it looks at the market and it only leaves standing the most valuable people. The 
Creme de la creme, they rise to the top. The most valuable people rise to the top and there's absolutely no space for the people that are not valuable. So that's what's going to be changing with social media marketing agency in 2023. And before we get into the tangible technical of how to sign clients and learning how to deliver incredible results for your clients, let's talk a little bit about the results that you can expect by implementing this new approach to SMMA. First of all, when you become valuable and you learn technical and tangible skills that you can add to your clients, your sales become completely effortless. Why? Because they become mainly value driven. And the thing is with B2B sales, business to business sales, meaning you're talking to big companies that are making, you know, millions and you're talking to founders, you cannot fool them with some dirty sales tactic. This is not 2015 where people that knew how to do Facebook ads were seen as like wizards, right? People are sophisticated at this point, even local business owners, like they're sophisticated. Most people know how to run ads themselves. They may not be very good at it. And that's not really the main value that you offer when you position yourself as a solution offer and not a service. But my point is, it's very clear if you don't know what you're talking about. And so your sales, when you've become valuable, actually become very effortless. Not only that, but you can actually keep your clients for much longer because you get them incredible results and, and, and you're not having to be in this constant hamster wheel of, you know, you sign a client and then the client leaves and you constantly have to onboard clients and, and, and it's just a mess. You're also much more respected because they don't see you as this external agency or freelancer. They see you as an inherent part of their business uh, who's not just in charge of some service like Facebook ads, who's actually in charge of growth. You're coming in more as a growth partner instead of so much a external agency that does a bunch of services delegated to a contractor. And so the switching cost, which is the cost of replacing you is so much higher. Most freelancers and agencies, they offer services. Very, very few people actually offer a growth solution, meaning you come in and you look at growth from a 360 lens. You, you come into an e-com business and you look at the offer, the landing page, the media buying, the email marketing, and you put together a growth formula, which I'm actually going to be showing you uh, later on in this video, how to actually do that and get them incredible results. Not only that, but you walk different because you have massive confidence in your value. In fact, the reason why I sleep very well at night and I walk a little different is because I know that I'm valuable to 99.9% .9 of companies out there because I've grown e-com brands, I've grown agencies, I've also grown info product businesses, and I've also grown my personal brand to close to a million followers. And so when you have the skill of growth, everyone wants to work with you. Your sales, as I said, become effortless, but you also get so much inbound and so many referrals because you have the skill that everyone wants right now and a skill that is only going to be more in demand in the next 10 to 15 years. And it's the people that have this skill right now and can iterate and constantly adapt and be innovative and build their authority right now that are going to be at the top and seen as the authority for the next 10 years. Also, when you keep your clients for much longer, you actually get to build lifelong lasting incredible relationships with the founders that you're working with. You get to build your network. I'll show you in a bit how one of the uh, business owners that I work with actually became a partner in one of my e-com brands. But perhaps the coolest thing about this new approach is also all the ways that we can make money. If you look at most SMA owners, the only way that they make money is by charging very low ticket retainers, competing on price against literally everyone else, right? The way we make money as someone who's offering a growth solution instead of a service like Facebook ads, as someone who actually has tangible technical skills instead of just delegating to contractors and not knowing what they're talking about as someone who uses confidence on sales goals instead of just you know using sales tactics to get people through the door and having them leave after a minimum retention rate the way we make money is actually very different as a growth partner and so i'm going to show you right now all the ways that we can make money so first things first if you're looking to take your agency from really zero to 30k per month you're going to rely obviously on fixed fees right we often charge our clients a fixed monthly recurring fee for our services that gives us the peace of mind and pace for our dream lifestyle. And we charge anywhere between two to 10K because the great thing about econ businesses also is that they have incredible cash flow and they've allocated more resources to pour into growth because if they don't have that, it's because they need it like they need oxygen. But the massive portion of the money you make, and this is really where the game is at in 2023, is with ad profit deals. We charge our client a percentage of the profit we generate resulting in 10K plus per month clients oftentimes, right? So I have clients where one single client pays me 10K plus per month. I'll talk about that in just a second. Most of the money is actually made here and we take 10 to 30% of ad profit for every single partner slash client that we work with. Now, how do we calculate ad profit, which is sort of like a term that I've coined, right? Ad profit is simply the uh, revenue we generate through the paid advertising, through the ads that we run for our client minus our service fee as an agency, the fixed fee, right? Minus the money that we spend on the ads minus their cost of goods sold, essentially how much their product is, right? You do that calculation and you get ad profit. The reason why we can take literally 30% every single month is because that is money that we're putting into their pocket, pure profit, okay? Pure profit that we're putting into their pocket. So it's pretty sweet. And that's really where the money is made. The great thing about ad profits is that it grows month on month. As you start getting incredible results for the e-com businesses that you work with as a growth partner, 
The great thing about it is that we're gonna up the spend on the ads. Now, the more we spend on the ads, the more money we make them. And by result, because it's a percentage, the more money we make as well. Now, the next part is very fun, which is what I call the equity deals. I talked about how if you're looking to have success in the online space, you also wanna have longevity. It's great getting to 10K per month, but what's even greater is taking that from 10 to 100K per month to a million a month and doing so over 10 to 15 years. That builds generational wealth. The way I've been able to build generational wealth with my growth partner slash agency business, which I'll talk about in just a second, has been through obviously the fixed fees plus the ad profits. That's great. It's you know good money coming in that affords our dream lifestyle, all that good stuff. But it's also through the equity deals. I've been able to build an equity wealth portfolio of brands, econ brands that I haven't built myself. I haven't built the product. I haven't built the, the logistics. I haven't hired the, the full team. I haven't had the, the, the vision or the idea for the product or the brand. I haven't been in charge of the branding. I've just come in and done one single thing, which is be in charge of the growth. And I've been given in those companies a percentage of that company, equity. And I've taken anywhere between three to 10% equity in some of the brands that I've worked with. So taking a percentage in their business as the partnership matures and building up your wealth portfolio, because that's gonna be a really good payday if the company decides to sell or I decide to cash out, that's gonna be a good chunk of money. And that's really a great way of going from 30 to 100K per month. And the final way is you can actually build your own e-com brands as well, using the capital you've built, um, the all round skills that you've garnered from you know seeing these e-com brands at work, and also the team uh, that you've used to grow these e-com brands, you can actually start your own e-com brands. Not only that, but also using the connections and the network that you've garnered during that whole process. And that's a great way of going from 100K to a million a month. Show me any other business that has this growth trajectory. I'll go ahead and wait. This literally cannot compare with the old way of doing things uh, when it comes to social media marketing agency, where you just focus on little fixed fees working with local businesses that have absolutely no future. And once that quick fad is gone, what do you do, right? There's no next step. There's no growth process. There's no projection. And how do I know this? How do I know that these are all the different ways that we make money? Because that's actually what I've done, right? That is purely my journey. I have nine clients that pay me anywhere between three to 7K monthly recurring fixed fees at my e-com growth partner business, ecom.io. You can go ahead, you can search it up, you can click around, okay? Um, and so I have those fixed fees, nine clients. That's not a lot because we focus on fewer clients that are higher value. Not only that, but I have ad profit deals for all the clients that I work with. And it ranges between, for me uh, at this point, it ranges between 20 to 30%. This means I have clients that pay me 10K plus per month total. If that wasn't enough, equity deals. I have clients with which I have equity deals, like for example, Kava Horse Academy. And I actually want to show you proof of this and the results that I am getting using this model. So I'm going to hop on my Stripe and show you those results. So this is ecom.io, my ecom growth partner business. And this is how much we've generated through Stripe. Um, this is just through Stripe. So a lot of the payments that we actually get from our e-com partners, they actually come through bank transfer, but you can see that we're generating over 100K on Stripe. And then if you combine the bank transfers, we're doing over 200K per month, predictably every single month with our own e-com growth partner business. And if that wasn't enough, okay, the way I've been able to scale my agency, my e-com growth partner business, ecom.io to 200K plus per month, and a lot of people don't understand how I'm able to generate those numbers, is because I've been, I've been through this trajectory. I would definitely really struggle to get to those numbers if I was just working the traditional SMMA, right? You know, charging local businesses very small retainers. But I've also been able to build my own e-com brands while still running my growth partner business like Dr. Planas Cosmetica, drplanascosmetica.com. You can search it up. In fact, I'll be showing you examples of that brand, illustrating how you can get incredible results for e-com brands. And that e-com brand, Dr. Plans Cosmetica, I've been able to scale to seven figures. Again, I'm gonna hop on my Shopify and show you proof of that now. Through Shopify, as you can see, we are generating, boom, boom, boom. if we take the last two months as well, we're generating over uh, 70K, um, over 70K every single month, predictably. And that has taken me past the 100K per month mark. This is really the way to, you know, not only maximize results and value for the marketplace, but as a result, also make the most money yourself as a social media marketing agency in 2023. So we have talked about the changes between 2018, 2022 uh, SMMA, and 2023 SME, which is very, very radical changes uh, that you have to be aware of and adjust to if you are to have success because you know it's, it's, it's a saturated space more than ever, but there's incredible ways of making money if you are to set yourself apart. We've also talked about the outcome and the result of 
you know, hopping on this, this new age of social media marketing agency and service entrepreneurs. And we've just talked about all the ways you can actually monetize and how the business model actually works and how blissful it is and how scalable it is, right? Because most people, the reason why they don't believe that people like me can generate those sort of numbers is because they don't understand the growth trajectory. Now, what I want to do is jump on the how and show you the two different faces and skills that you need to garner to have insane success with your social media marketing agency growth partner business. The first one is being able to deliver incredible results, which is going to give you a ton of confidence going into the sales goals and actually be able to keep your clients for long and make the most money because the more money that you make your clients, the more money you make them with, with the ad profit deals. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to get clients for your agency. So pretty cool stuff. Let's get right into it. Now, first and first, create a product people want and need. Secondly, acquire new customers for the brand. This, uh, this involves uh, having a winning ac a client acquisition offer, an information fast marketing approach, which I'll talk about in just a, a bit, the high value content offer strategy, having high converting ads and uh, remarketing strategy, ensuring customer satisfaction with the brand and getting customers to buy again. The reason why I've highlighted those in blue is because those are the only two things that we're in charge of. With this training, we're gonna focus on how to actually acquire new customers for the brand and for the e-com business that we're working with so we can generate them incredible results, make the most money ourselves and keep them on as a client for a very long time. Now, within that section, we have, as I said, winning client acquisition offer, the information for us, uh, high value content uh, funnel, high, high converting ad strategy. Then we're also gonna talk about the media buying and finally, we're gonna talk about the email marketing mastery. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and I'm actually gonna be walking you through all of this using my own brand, Dr. Blanc's Cosmetica, where I actively put my own money down. So not only do I have my agency growth partner business, uh, Ecom.io, but I'm putting my own money down in Dr. Plants Cosmetica so I can actually show you uh, what we're doing to generate the results that we are uh, generating. And the great thing is that we also apply these concepts for all the brands that we work with. So, so the first thing that we do is we use an information first marketing approach. The problem with most brands is that they drive people straight to their homepage or a product page, essentially telling them to buy something, right? The reality is if you're looking to have success with online advertising in 2023, it is an absolute must to fit the context of social media. You have to understand that people are on social media where we're actually going to be running the ads. They are on there to be entertained, educated, uh, or to see their friends, family, just to keep up to date with people that they care about, right? And so when you shove a product down their face, you're only really going to appeal to a very, very small percentage of people who are in buying mode. We want to appeal to a broad market. And so to appeal to broad market, you want to lead with value. And that is one of the ways that we acquire new customers for our e com brands. We use what I call a masterclass strategy. So we drive them to a free masterclass, for example, in the case of my cosmetic line. By the way, I've translated everything into English. So, you know, the copy may be a little bit funky, um, but we, we drive them to a masterclass, for example, the three anti-aging uh, secrets of top celebrities. Right. This is the one of the business owners that I, I actually partner with. So that's what I was referring to when I mentioned it early on in the training. And they can actually go ahead and opt into this uh, masterclass. It's all framed around us giving value to them and them, you know, learning stuff, right? So they go ahead, they register, and they're able to watch this masterclass where for 75 to 80% of the video, we're gonna add value to them. Uh, and for the last 20%, we're gonna uh, be able to pitch them our product. When we pitch them our product, we tell them to click the button down below, and then we go ahead and we take them to our product page. I'm going to translate it as well. This is the uh, the winning acquisition offer that I was referring to, right? So we're not just also selling a really low ticket product uh, or just a product that is not very innovative. We typically like to package things, bundle things up. Like for example, this anti-aging pack uh, that includes a cream and a serum. Let me see if I can translate this. Yeah, I think it's translated. So it, it, it has a, a, an anti-aging cream and a serum plus a little gift. And the great thing about a bundle slash pack, and the reason why it's a winning acquisition offer is because we're reducing a lot of complexity for the buyer with a bundle because we can frame it as a routine. We can frame it as a process. Not only that, but the ability to story tell out of a routine or a process that you put together is just much, much easier. If that wasn't enough, we can actually charge our product um, at a you know pretty high price, so 139. And so they can go ahead and purchase this product. Notice that we only give them one option. And so to acquire new customers for an e-com brand, you only really want to give them one single option. Do not drive them to a homepage with a billion different options. The reason why we do this is because first of all, we want to be able to pitch it on a masterclass. We wouldn't be able to pitch a billion different products. So one single product on a masterclass, we've added value to them. Thus, they're much warmer when they jump on this landing page and we're reducing all complexity for them. Another reason why this is incredibly valuable to just have one single product is because we know what that new customer is going to buy. This allows us to know exactly how much we can spend per customer. 
So it makes the whole funnel and the whole process to getting customers much, much easier and much more scalable. For those of you who are just getting started in the space, you might have to rewatch this, but the main key takeaways is the fact that we're using an information false marketing approach. So we're leading with, for example, a masterclass, we're driving people to this masterclass and, and then we're offering them one single a solution that they can buy. So we've talked about the winning client acquisition offer. You saw how we bundle things up to increase the perceived value, also increase the average order value. We've talked about the information for us, high value content funnel that works tremendously well for e-com businesses and you know that I'm actively using for uh, my own e-com brands, essentially leading people to something like a masterclass or you know could be a, an advertorial, uh, a blog, whatever it is, where you add value to them and then you weave into the pitch. So a lot more people are going to click on that, uh, not only that, but subscribe with their email. So you get an email from them and then you have the ability to pitch in a much better environment where you have their attention. You don't have that on social media when you're running an ad, right? Now, now what we're gonna talk about is the high converting ad strategy. So what sort of content do we use to drive people to these masterclasses, as well as a little bit about media buying on Facebook. So I'm actually gonna be sharing with you a an account, okay, of a brand that we're gonna be launching very, very soon. And, and as you can see, we're optimizing for a, a video sales letter, which is a masterclass, just like we talked about. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have different uh, angles, okay? What an angle is, is essentially different ideas for videos and ad copies that we're gonna use for these ads. So for example, here we have most successful people. If we click on this, you're then gonna see our ad sets, right? So we have campaigns, then that's broken into ad sets. Uh, and so at the ad set level, we're gonna, we're gonna have a bunch of different interest targeting, like we feel match the target audience for this product. I cannot reveal exactly what this product is just for confidentiality reasons, but these are some of the interests that we've determined match uh, you know, the target audience. We've kept it fairly broad. That is what works right now on meta ads, simply because they've taken a lot of the ingenuity out of the media buying process and the creative is the most important element. So you wanna keep the audiences broad and, then, and let the algorithm work. You obviously wanna give the algorithm a little bit of a hint, but as you can see, um, these different interests are, you know, Fairly similar, except for Netflix. We always like to we always like to try something out that's quite broad uh, and still relative in the size of audience uh, than the other uh, interest targets. So to dive deeper into this concept, the world's most successful that will be the angle, um, and Dave Asprey will be the interest targeting. Now inside the world's most successful, we have a video that we run, and I'm going to show you what that uh, looks like. So that video will be in feed format. What do the world's most successful people have in common? This is a question that has always fascinated me. So I just did what any normal person would do. I spent and I put together a free masterclass showing you the exact three step process that we follow to go from social media scrollers to top performers. All you have to do is click on this ad to save your slot today. So at the end of this video, we'll actually run, run them to a masterclass. That is an example of uh, an ad to a masterclass. This sort of ad is gonna work much better on social media as a Facebook ad, because first of all, we're not driving people to a product. We're not showing them even a product. So it fits the context of social media where people are there to be educated, entertained, uh, and to see people, right? To see uh, human beings, not products. And so we'll do that per angle. That angle was the world's most successful. And I was talking about what do the world's most successful people have in common? We'll run those campaigns to a landing page that looks very similar to this, right? Where they can sign up to a master class. Now, on top of that, we will also have a warm retargeting campaign and a hot retargeting campaign. These are very simple campaigns. The way we'll do warm retargeting is we'll retarget people that have shown some sort of interest. Maybe they've hopped on the masterclass. Maybe they've actually uh, hopped on the landing page for the masterclass. Maybe they've engaged with the video ad. Maybe they've watched a certain percentage of the video, meaning they've shown interest. Maybe they've engaged with our Instagram page or our, our Facebook page. We'll literally just retarget. So we'll, we show them the best angle we have seen perform, right? So for example, let's just say that the most successful people, that video that I showed you is the best angle. We'll actually re-show uh, them that angle for warm retargeting, okay? Omnipresence is so incredibly important when it comes to marketing, especially if you have something that is very good. People need to see it time and time again uh, for them to be reminded and for them to finally buy. Now, this does not mean that you're constantly in their face just being super annoying. Uh, remember, <clears throat> these video ads are pure value. But the people that have shown a little bit of interest, we show them the best ad angle. So it may be a different angle that they've seen. Maybe they saw the um, Co uh, Kobe Oprah uh, one, right? So let's just go. <clears throat> um, let me show you what this looks like. What makes this Kobe Bryant? This Kobe Bryant. What makes this Warren Buffett? This Warren Buffett. And what makes this Oprah Winfrey? 
this over a free masterclass showing you the exact three-step proven blueprint that we use to go from social media scrollers to laser focused top performers all you have to do is click this ad to save your slot today uh, so that that's that video for example if they saw that fast maybe that wasn't the best performing video or won't be the best performing video and we'll show them a different uh video ad the point is we show them uh, another ad that drives them to the masterclass again so we'll drive them back to this page for them to watch the masterclass now if you've actually hopped on the product page we'll put them in our hot retargeting audience which is people that are actually interested in our uh, product so they are product aware and we can drive them back to the this landing page right here okay so that is how our media buying strategy works and that is one of the key ways that we generate customers for the partners clients uh, that we work with as well as my own e-com brand we've now talked about the tangible technical skill of growing brands online let's talk about how to actually generate clients how to sign clients in 2023 for your social media marketing agency because again the landscape has changed completely and drastically the first thing that you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that you pick a niche within the e-commerce space the reason why i say that is because i truly believe competition is for losers that is why we don't sell services and we sell growth solutions because we don't want to compete against everyone else on a simple commodity and that is also why we pick a niche within e-commerce because when you pick a niche like for example vegan uh, or for example apparel and fashion or for example you know wellness when you pick a niche within e-commerce you're building what i call a monopoly growth partner slash agency business meaning there's very few people who focus on e-commerce also focus on wellness brands within e-commerce and have a growth solution and not just offer services, right? You've literally set yourself apart from 99.99% of people out there. And so you're competing against one, if that, right? You're literally tapping into a blue ocean straight out the bat. So you want to make sure that you pick a niche within e-commerce. There's a myriad of different niches that you can pick from, as I said. Like, for example, apparel and fashion, health, wellness, food and beverage, nutrition, pet brands, the list goes on, right? You can also pick what I call behavioral based niches like vegan, sustainable brands, black owned e-com businesses, and the list goes on. Now that you've gone ahead and picked a niche, we're going to go ahead and craft a funnel, a sales process that you're going to use to get clients for your agency. What I recommend is having a 15 minute demo call that drives them to a 45 minute strategy session. Now, the way we structure it like this, where we have one 15 minute demo call and then another, uh, and then that transitions into a 45 minute strategy session because expecting a B2B, a business to business prospect to close on a uh, on a FOSCO absolutely tells me that you don't know how B2B actually works. I can assure you for the vast, vast majority of the partners that I've worked with and I've worked with companies like Headway App, Founder Magazine, uh, Oberlo, uh, Clean Beauty, and the list goes on. It has not been a one go close. And so do not expect to just hop on a call and close them there and there, especially because we're talking about high ticket retainers with ad profit deals. We're talking about juicy deals, okay? And so the more a deal is worth, typically the longer the sales funnel. This is not a very long sales funnel. It's just two calls, but you need to be aware that it has to be a two call close framework. Now, how are we actually going to generate traffic? Meaning how are we going to get meetings booked? Let's mainly talk about my organic content production process. Using this framework for my growth partner business, we're able to generate 30 to 50 meetings predictably a day. And I've built close to a million followers uh, using this framework as well of content. Now, I'm not saying you need a million followers and I'm not saying you need to book 30 to 50 meetings. In fact, you only really need to book one to three meetings a day predictably, which is really not that hard with this process because as you've seen with my own growth partner business, you don't need a lot of partners to make a lot of money. But the reason why this approach is the way to go in 2023 is because the whole concept of cold emails and cold calls, I'm not saying it's dead because people love to say things are dead just to create controversy and polarize. I'm not saying it's dead. Can you sign low ticket local business pizzerias with a cold call? Maybe, right? Offering them social media management for 300 bucks? Maybe. Offering them uh, Facebook ads for uh, a key a month? Maybe, right? But can you sign uh, uh, an e-com business, uh, an e-com brand that is making 200 to 500k per month uh, and that's gonna pay you three to 5k per month, like life-changing money in a cold call or a cold email? probably not the easiest way to go about that, right? The reason why this is, is because in 2023, the line between personal and professional life is incredibly blurred. People post their professional accomplishments on social media. People love to see the person behind a company because at the end of the day, humans connect with humans. And so having a process where there's content and when you can nurture and you can add value to the marketplace, free value puts you in a position of power where clients are coming to you and where when you speak to clients, they see you as an authority versus a position of force, which 
which is what most agency owners or people looking to get into the SME space uh, actually use, which is just banging out hundreds of cold emails, hundreds of cold calls, chasing and chasing clients, trying to lock one meeting in and just getting rejected and disrespected by these clients. A few more reasons why organic content works incredibly well is because you're not seen as a fly by night opportunist. Most of these SMA owners getting into the space uh, or people looking to start an SMA, they're seen as a fly by night opportunist because they're, you know, it comes across like people can tell that you're just trying to make a quick buck. You send a cold email and you have absolutely no idea as to how to generate value for the, the prospect that you've reached out to. Um, and you're just like everyone else. Your website looks the same. Your offer looks the same. You're offering the exact same service. And maybe you're also delegating to the same washed out contractor that someone else is using. But perhaps the final reason why organic content works tremendously well is because eventually, let me break it down to you. Okay. If you're looking to have success in the online space, you're going to have to build some sort of online presence, personal brand. Now, I'm not saying you have to have millions of followers. I'm not saying you have to even be on video, okay? But the reality is, just like I said, that in the next 10 to 15 years, the, the top most valuable people are gonna be those that have garnered the skill right now and, and that have set their authority right now as the people to go to when it comes to growing th things online, which everyone is uh, currently or is gonna be doing in the next 10 to 15 years. The same way that I've said that, I also generally believe, and this is not some crazy thought, you can ask anyone else that has been in the space for a while, like I have in, in five years, if you don't have some sort of personal brand or some sort of online presence, you're making your life way, way harder than it has to be. Can you still get results? Yes, right? But it's the analogy that I used at the start. If I'm trying to get to a finish line, I'd rather pick the Ferrari and go as fast as possible. And that is what a personal brand allows you to do. And so you might as well get started now. Here is how it's gonna work. First of all, you're gonna have two different options. You can either go video or you can go text, okay? There's, no, there's absolutely no excuse. If you don't wanna be on video, go text. If you do like expressing yourself on video, go video. For example, I can do text but I prefer saying things on video. And that is why I mainly do video. If you pick video, then you're gonna go mainly short form content. And that's gonna go on TikTok, shorts and reels. And you're also gonna do a little bit of long form content on LinkedIn and YouTube. If you pick text, you're gonna do Twitter, you're gonna do LinkedIn, and you're also gonna do Facebook, okay? So you can pick text, you can pick video. That is up to you. That is step number one. Secondly, you're gonna start posting content predictably. Now I'm not saying to be a Gary Vee running around like a headless chicken creating 100 billion different pieces of content. You have to be strategic about it. The people that I know are making the most money online. They're not the ones posting the most. They're, they're not the ones with, with you know the most followers. They're the ones that are strategic about it and that have a clear sales process. When it comes to your content, you're gonna make it niche specific. So you know, going back to what I uh, mentioned at the start of this section, you wanna make sure that you have a niche within e-commerce. Let's just say that you've picked apparel and fashion, right? Your content is gonna be around apparel and fashion to start with. That's gonna allow you to build authority very, very fast. It may not reach a mass audience, but we're not going for quantity, we're going for quality. And the reason why that is, is because you're not only gonna be posting content, but you're actually gonna be adding people to your network. Meaning on LinkedIn, for example, on Facebook, you're actually gonna be adding qualified prospects into your network so they see your content. So you're not just, you know, sitting like this, hoping for people to see the content. That is gonna happen, right? But that's gonna take a little bit longer. You're gonna add people into your network that are qualified and they're gonna start seeing your content so you have top of mind awareness. Types of content that you wanna post are four main types. Number one is value-based niche specific content, as I said. The way you do this is you take uh, content that has already worked, for example, let's just say a big creator like Neil Patel has spoken about five key targeting strategies for, um, you know, e-com brands in 2023. Uh, for, for Facebook ads, right? Um, you can go ahead and apply that into apparel fashion. So it would be top five uh, key targeting uh, Facebook strategies for apparel fashion brands in 2023, right? And you can take a lot of the concepts that this person talks about, obviously put your own spin to it, put your own creativity into it, and then create unlimited pieces of content using stuff that is already out there in the internet and making it more specific around your niche. Number two, does a type of content. You're gonna comment on your niche, commentary on that specific space. And so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go on the top magazines. For example, on Peron Fashion, you may go on GQ. And, and GQ may be talking about the fashion trends uh, online or the fashion trends of influencers or whatever. You can comment on this new trend to show that you're actually in that space, to show that you care about that space to those econ founders. That's gonna resonate more with them even than the actual value-based sort of content. Because what do they know more about? Their space or Facebook ads? Their space, right? And what do people love to talk about? Things that they know about or things that they don't know about. Things that they know about, right? So that is why you wanna make sure that you include that second type of content. Thirdly, as I said, people love to see the personal side of things, not just the business side of things. And so you wanna mix in personal life and maybe apply it to your professional uh, life, right? So maybe you can go ahead 
and take a picture of you in your work setup. And you can talk about the fact that you love fashion, um, you know, with a nice outfit, but what you love even more is helping other fashion brands that thrive. That's just an example, right? But that is a way of mixing personal life into business life and adding authority. And the fourth type of content is content that gets people to show they are actually interested. So I'm gonna show on screen a few examples of me doing that. But the way you do this, for example, is you say, I created a uh, free training on, again, I don't know, the top five uh, Facebook ad targeting strategies for e-com brands. Who wants to see this, right? Comment me down below. And then you get a bunch of people commenting me and you can reach out to these people and start conversations to then get them into that 15 minute demo call. And, and that is the fourth and very important type of content that you wanna create. We've talked about picking a path, video or text. We've talked about content. And now we have to talk about a key concept, which is appointment setting framework. What sort of conversations are you gonna have with these qualified prospects in the DMs, in the social media platforms to get them to book in a meeting with you so you can get them from the 15 minute demo into a 45 minute strategy session. And what are you gonna do on this 15 minute demo? So a little bit about this appointment setting framework. If you don't know what appointment setting is, it's essentially the process that you follow to book appointments with people, to set appointments with people so you can sell them something. The reason why I call it framework and not script is because if you think that in 2023, you're gonna be able to use scripts and get people to be interested in what you have to offer. You are absolutely in for a rude awakening. The reason why the appointment setting framework works that I'm about to share with you is because it's not a script. You have a framework that you can follow time and time again, but it's a genuine conversation human to human that doesn't take you much longer. In fact, it probably takes you the same time because it's just so repeatable, but it gets you way better conversions. What you do with appointment setting is, first of all, you find out where they're currently at, where the prospect is currently at with their business, then where they're trying to get to. And finally, you propose a 15 minute demo call that is completely value driven, where you can show them some of the things that they can do to bridge that gap. Okay, so in 15 minutes, you're just gonna purely add value. And then if it makes sense, you're gonna then upgrade them to the strategy session. I'm gonna hop on my computer right now and show you the real life example of conversations that I've had in the past. Uh, so you can get a bit of an idea as to what those conversations can look like. Because we're doing it the effective way, which is actually having a genuine chat with these people, right? The effective way as well. Um, we, you know, all, all conversations are going to be uh, different, but because I'm teaching you the core principles and the core structure, then you can take the structure and make it work for all these uh, different cases. Okay. So essentially all these stay the same where I'm finding out where they're currently at, uh, where they're trying to get to, and then proposing a call, right. To give, to bring them clarity on this. So this is a real conversation that I'm going to be walking you th uh, through and uh, I've gone ahead and I put it into words here for you to digest it easy. Okay. So example one, love what you're doing at X. Okay. I'm not going to mention the brand name, but love what you're doing at X for men's health. Uh, bringing more awareness to topics like these is key, right? So I was doing, um, you know, one of the sub niches. I'm not saying men's health is like, you should do men's health because I was doing it at one point. No, just go ahead, pick a sub niche, all niches work. Uh, but I bring in more awareness to topics like these is key. Always great, uh, great connecting with positive, like-minded people. Would love to connect and follow your journey. Okay. So that was my note. So prospect connected to this, okay? And, he actually, and, and the prospect actually responded. You'll find this a lot, uh, that they'll respond to notes. Uh, most people won't, but uh, quite a few prospects will. Uh, if they don't, then you are gonna go ahead and, and text them um, uh, again, right? Uh, so for example, maybe you can uh, mention a little bit about a post they, uh, they posted, right? So, uh, uh, hey, you know, lo love what you guys are doing, um, you know, with the campaign, or love what you guys are, are doing with the new initiative. Uh, I think, um, you know, I think it's super smart. Uh, and then, you know, you'll start a conversation that way. And then maybe you can dig a little bit deeper into the initiative, see where they're at, see where they're trying to get to. And again, it's, it's always the same structure, right? So uh, prospect says this, hey, hi, uh, thanks for the kind words, much appreciated. And I say, of course, I think the, the TikToks, so they were posting on TikTok and, and they were doing it quite well, actually, uh, from someone who's posted on TikTok for quite a while um, and, and quite, a, quite a large volume as well. Uh, they were they were doing a really good job. So I think the tech talks you guys are posting are very smart, ha, ha right? Me, I texted again. So little text bubbles, right? I'm keeping it short. How are they working out? Okay, so I I, I stroked uh, their you know his, his ego a little bit, right? And I I showed him that I'm aware of what what they're doing, right? Uh, and he answered, yeah, we we started doing these uh, those recently, and many customers have come to know the brand because of them. So I guess good. Me. That's amazing, right? So I'm, I'm keeping it lighthearted. I'm keeping it, um, you know, I'm, I'm stroking his ego, ego a little bit. I'm building reward, right? Uh, I'm keeping it not super professional, but also not super casual, right? So I'm, I'm just, just a fine balance, right? That's amazing. Uh, you know, I brought a haha here. Again, you have to find your tone, but 
I understand that you're on social media, right? You're not writing a, uh, um, uh, you know, an email. <laughs> I, I always laugh at these like email threads from like, you know, cor very traditional corporate emails. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not even gonna try, but they're super like uh, professional and, you know, it's professional language. And it's just understanding the context of the platform you're in, right? So right now we're on social media and we wanna be social, right? And it's more of a casual um, conversation. So I go, that's amazing. TikTok has been, uh, has uh, so much potential for new brand exposure and new customers. So I'm guessing you guys have been going more than ever as of late. You must be happy, right? So I'm like, uh, so so essentially here, it's kind of like you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm basically um, you know I'm, I'm guessing right, uh, and I'm baiting him into saying either yes or no or give me a bit more um, give me a bit more uh, visibility on 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 whether they're they're doing so or not, right? And I'm I'm trying to get visibility by appealing to his feelings, right? So I'm making it. It seems like I'm making it more about his feelings, but I also want to get a, an idea as to, you know, whether they're growing more than ever, right? This is, like, it, it's all genuine. Like, it has to feel genuine, all right? Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. So, Prospect goes, yes, it's been going well, but there's still a lot of room from, for uh, growth. So, I go, okay, cool, perfect, right? That gives me a good leeway. So, I'm like, uh, okay, well, you know, uh, I could have said, you know, cool, that's amazing, whatever, right? But I, I didn't want to re repeat myself. And one of the things that I try to do is I try to uh, mirror what you know the words that he or she is using right and this person is a, is a he so uh he's said growth right so i'm going to use the word growth what's the type of growth you had in mind so here he goes to me right doesn't respond i'm posting content regardless right and i actually you know i added this here for you to see because the key is to make sure that you you know while you're doing this while you're messaging right you're posting content so that they see your content and they go, oh, that's interesting, right? Oh, this person have he's that you know this person has actually messaged me. Now they're posting cool content. Clearly, he's an authority, and now either they're gonna write to me, they're gonna remember the the message that I send uh, that I send them, right? Or when I do follow up with them, the follow up is gonna be more effective because they're seeing my content. I added here for you to see that content is is quite important, and so I followed up in two days, and I just followed up with a question mark and an emoji, right? Not much, very uh, very minimal. Prospect th uh, actually responds finally. So uh, Prospect says, I think uh, if we add a few more prospects to the line, we could probably double our revenue. And I go, that's amazing, right? And you already have a launch strategy for those. And he goes, not yet. We're busy with Q4 planning right now. So I, I can see that he's, he's you know, at the start, I'd built quite a bit of report. Now, since the conversation transitioned a little bit more into the sales, there's going to be a little bit, a little bit more resistance, right? And that's why I may need to follow up a little bit more, right? I, I still keep it casual, right? And I still stroke um, his his ego a little bit, right? But you can see that he knows where he has a feeling of, of where this is headed, right? So I go, I feel you, right? So I'm, I'm showing empathy, uh, and I mirror again. Q4 is definitely a crazy season for e-commerce. I'm showing that I, I I know what I'm talking about, okay? And then I, I messaged again. So I, I already see the, the, the chance of going at it, right? And you don't have to beat around the bush, right? It's not about having the longest conversation and just staying friends. No, I want to lock in that. The, the key is to lock in a call, right? So I go, we'd love to see if me and the team can uh, help bring you clar more clarity on a launch and growth strategy for those for uh, those new products and a plan of attack moving forward with strategies with which we felt other brands like X in the space generate an extra 300K per month, okay? We've actually done that. And I can say this, if you haven't done already, uh, if you haven't done this, that's completely fine. In fact, most of you haven't done this, right? So, you, so and I, I, and when I started, I hadn't either. So I just went ahead and I said, uh, you know, you could say with strategies that are proven for uh, wellness brands, right? Or strategies uh, that competitors like, I mentioned a competitor of theirs are using, right? And so you're not saying I've, I've helped this brand. If you can, might as well, right? But you can get around it and 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 talk about a competitor of theirs that's using the strategies, or talk about the value of these strategies because a lot, you know, um, because you know they're great, right, within the wellness space or whatever sub niche you're in, right? So keep that in mind. You don't have to add this little bit at the end. Uh, I know you're super busy because you just told me. Uh, so quick, uh, so so it'd be a quick twenty minute. I, I wrote so quick twenty minute doesn't really make much drama uh, grammatical uh, sense, but you know. Uh, that's what I wrote. No obligation. Are you free this week? Okay. So again, I'm not sending him his my Canonly, right? I'm not sending him anything. I'm just asking a question, right? So it's a conversation. It's a back and forth. He doesn't respond. I'm posting content regardless. So I stay consistent with the content. I follow it up in two days with the exact same follow-up. Okay. And then he answers and he says, I could do Friday. 
and I go uh, sweet you know I could have said sweet I go should be good do you want me to send you uh, my calendar so you can book in a time that works okay I could have also said uh, cool what's your uh, what's your email right um, and I could have just gone ahead and, and sent a calendar invite on Google Calendar. Instead, I asked him if I could send my calendar uh, so you so you can book in a time that works. So I'm getting his permission. So th so that also when I send my Canly link, so I've created a new event called you know you can call it a strategy session. So that when I send the link, he is more uh, inclined to actually book it because he has committed. Right, he's given you permission to send it. So he uh, he says sure. I send over the calendar a Canly link. Okay, so I created a new event and I go, here it is. Let me know if you can find a time that works there. Uh, he doesn't book. I'm posting content regardless. I follow it up in two days. And I go, did you find a time that works? Okay, so he didn't book. Uh, and so I, I, I follow it up. I'm posting content regardless. And so when I ask, he goes, just want to know first, is this a sales call? Right? So sometimes you will get this and I go, look, because you want to be transparent and you want to dispel the catch, right? Because this all, you know, why are you doing this? You want to be transparent with it. So I, I tell him, look, the reason why we do these calls is because one, uh, once prospects hear our strategies and the processes that we cover in in this um, in the, the strategy session, they ask to know more about what we do in the wellness space, right? And how we can help them. If that's the case, then we see if we could help them. But first and foremost is a diagnosis match with strategies, right? So I'm telling him, look, um, and, and, and I'm telling him the truth, but I'm also, it's, I'm using the truth as a sort of flex. I'm, I tell him, look, once, once they jump on this call, and they see the type of strategies that we talk about. They see um, the way we, ha you know, handle, uh, handle ourselves and, and our um, mon monastic focus and obsession with this specific sub niche. They go, "Hey, uh, what do you guys do in this space? Like, uh, is there a, a possibility that you could help us?" And then we talk about, yeah, we, we talk about how we could help you. Right? So I'm saying it could t turn into a sales call, 100, percent right? Uh, but also, I'm using that opportunity to kind of brag about how valuable these calls are. Again reiterating the fact that these calls are very valuable and that why they should book in uh, with us. But first and foremost is the diagnosis match with strategies, I say, and he says, uh, sounds good, just booked. Great, see you then, all right? So that is an example of a um, sales conversation, all right, uh, that, that I had with a prospect. And you can start these conversations and you can do this time and time again. The conversations will be different, right? So that's why I'm not giving you, you know, I'm giving you way more valuable is I'm giving you tangible uh, conversations. I'm, I'm giving you tangible, uh, tangible examples instead of like a script that that's not going to work for anyone, right? Um, I'm telling you exactly what we, we're doing, right? We're we're going, uh, uh, you know, we're we're understanding where they're currently at. We're uh, getting information on where they're trying to get to, right? In this case, you know, he he was uh, looking to to launch a bunch of uh, new products to uh, increase his, you know, to double his revenue, right? So I, I figured out where they're currently at. So he said they were doing well, but there was uh, a lot of room for growth. He was looking, and, and he also said that he is looking to add a few more products to the line. Okay, cool. So that's my step two. Step three, I found out that he, with the, the new products, he would look to double his revenue, right? And then I also understood that his uh, roadblock of his is that he's busy. Uh, and so he doesn't have really the, the time to put into the, 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 the growth and the uh, launch strategy for these, right? So when I saw that opportunity, I went for the pitch of the call. Right, and I um, did it in a way in a way where I framed it uh, for him, right, specifically, right. So I, I talked about launch and growth strategy. Why? Because he had talked about that. So it's incredibly important that to uh, it's incredibly important to personalize it and tailor it to the person you're speaking to. Right. As a final note, look, if you're considering starting an online business, if you're considering escaping the rat race, the traditional route, <clears throat> and really breaking free and and designing the life of your dreams, what I can tell you is that it is not easy. I don't think anything in life is easy and and definitely nothing easy in life is worth pursuing. So it's not going to be easy. It can be simple though. And what it can be is 100% very, very rewarded and fulfilling when you can see the fruits of your labor and most importantly, look at yourself in the mirror and be proud of the person you are becoming because you're able to take care of not only yourself, but also your loved one. So my best wishes for 2023. Let's crush it. And that, my friend, is a wrap on this long training on how to start a social media marketing agency in 2023. For us, we talked about what has changed and how to adapt to it, uh, some of the outcomes that you can expect from this adaptation and, and from what is new, uh, the ways we make money as a new age SMA owner in 2023, how to actually deliver incredible results, the technical, tangible skill, and finally, how to actually sign clients for your growth partner business. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a massive thumbs up. And finally, if you want to see more free trainings on the growth partner model, uh, social media marketing agency, how to grow brands online, 
then go ahead and check out the free mastermind that I have on Facebook. You can go ahead and apply. And if you're a good fit, we'll let you in. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.